Simpson still moving in motion. Second down from the 47 and another sack. Chop Robinson didn't get there on first down, but he got there on second down. And this guy is a first round talent coming off the edge. You better know where number 44 is. They didn't block him last time. They tried to block him this time. What is going on, Bucks fans, NCFP fans? Evan Wanish here back at you with yet another video talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And as you can see today, we are going to be going over some prospect uh, reviews, I guess you could say, courtesy of me over on BucksNation.com. As you can see there, BucksNation.com. Go check it out. I'm not the only one who has been writing these prospect profiles. Uh, our entire staff has as well, so be sure to check it all out. But today, uh, we're going to be focusing on Buccaneers NFL draft target, Penn State edge rusher Chop Robinson. Now, I know Chop Robinson has been uh, a guy who a lot of Bucks fans have talked about, uh, and I do think that it's a possibility that the Buccaneers could select him, um, especially if the board falls a certain way uh, in the first round. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to read the entire article. just going to go over a few cliff notes here, kind of. Uh, Chop Robinson's collegiate career. Um, he was at Maryland for transferring to Penn State. Uh, his final season at Penn State, he finished with 15 tackles, four sacks, and two forced fumbles. Uh, the sack production, right, the the – one thing that is concerning about Robinson is the lack of sack production in college. In his three years of playing college football, his career high in sacks for a single season is five and a half, and he had 11 total sacks over the span of three seasons. So this is definitely a guy who I you're, you are taking a risk uh, because you're projecting that he's going to be more than that at the NFL level, right? You're projecting that he's hopefully going to be a bit better and develop more as a pass rusher when he gets to the NFL and gets the right coaching. As pro day and combine, uh, he ran a 4 4 8 40 yard dash, which is pretty remarkable for an edge rusher. I mean, that is pretty fast, uh, for an edge rusher. I know we caught a lot of eyes there, uh, at the combine. Uh, what he can do for the Buccaneers in 2024. Look, I think he can come in and provide value, as I say in the article here. Uh, and I also think, you know, for the future, but in terms of 2024, they've added Randy Gregory, but that's about it. Like, like they still need another edge rusher. So adding a guy, Chop Robinson, could make a lot of sense. And it could be a guy who I think it's good that he sort of doesn't have to be the savior, per se, for 2024. Uh, Chop Robinson could come in and immediately provide value for Tampa when it comes to rushing the passer. He is far from a finished product, but adding Robinson would, would provide a spark to the pass rush. Uh, so I actually think like a, a, a comp for him as like a guy who I, I think he could, if he reaches his full potential, I think he could be a lot like a, like a, a Hassan Reddick, who I know a lot of Bucks fans uh, wanted the Buccaneers to trade for this past offseason. But um yeah, I mean, I do think if Chop Robinson reaches his full potential, he could be in that Hassan Reddick type role there. And, uh, you know, I also think he, he wouldn't be playing every single snap. You know, it, it's not going to be um, – it was not like they're like I said, the Buccaneers are going to be counting on him and only him in 2024. So the three year outlook, though, and this is the important one, right? Um, the three year outlook because to me, this is the big one, right? This is the exciting but risky part about drafting Robinson. He has the athletic profile and agility to become one of the better pass rushers in the NFL in three years' time. Uh, Robinson has 10 plus sack potential on a yearly basis, but potential is the key word. Uh, the lack of production in college, yeah, you have to note that. Obviously, you really do have to note that, and uh, I do think that matters. Um, it, it, that won't change when they go up against NFL talent, right? He, he If he can't really rush the passer against the uh, college talent, how is that going to change? Well, uh, his pass rushing grades and rates and everything were pretty good in college as the sacks weren't there. So uh, I do think that the right place and right coaching uh, could definitely make a difference. And uh, if you were to pan out, the Bucks could be looking at a very powerful pass rush duo of Robinson and Diaby, which could terrorize opposing QBs for years to come. So we'll see. And then next up, we got the stock report. So uh, right now, Robinson appears to be a late first, early second round pick and has even been mocked to the Bucks uh, in a few mock drafts. It seems likely that Robinson will remain in that draft range and that is right where the Bucks have landed. So it's certainly a logical spot for the standout pass rusher. So, like I said, the Buccaneers picking at 26, it makes sense for them to consider a guy like Trapper Robinson if uh, guys like Lazu Latu are gone. Uh, 
Jared Verse is gone. Jackson Powers Johnson's gone. Graham Barton's gone. If they still want to go with a pass rusher, I think Chop Robinson could definitely make a difference. Now, here's where I'm going to call upon you guys. This is on the clock, okay? It's time for you guys to make the call. Should the Buccaneers draft uh, Chop Robinson in, in the draft? Uh, vote in the poll below. Well, as you can see right now, this is currently, all right? You can go, the, the poll is not closed yet. So you can go, you can go in and vote on this right now. Um, so it's only one vote for early is a trade up to secure him. But uh, most people think that they should pick him as projected uh, if they have a chance. Uh, then, But then also people that think that they should try and trade down and still get him. Like I said, he could be an early second round pick maybe. So maybe the Buccaneers trade back, get an asset and still be able to land him. Or there's a couple people here, 27 votes, that think that they shouldn't draft Chop Robinson at all. But I do want to hear your guys' thoughts. So I do want to see what you guys think about Chop Robinson. Do you like him? Do you not like him? Why? You know, why don't you like him? Why do you like him? Like I said, I think he's more of the, the boomer bust type of player in this draft. And there's not as many of them in this draft. But I do think it's either going to be a guy who's getting you three to five sacks a year. Or he's a guy that's going to be able to get you 10 plus sacks a season. Now, is he going to be able to get you 15 plus every year, like a TJ Watt? Or I don't expect that. Uh, but I do think Chop Robinson, given the right development, given the right coaching, I think he can turn into something uh, valuable for the Buccaneers should they pick him. So, uh, or I think, you know, any. I just think that you're going to have to be a little bit patient. And the thing about the Bucs is, you know, they. While their Super Bowl window isn't technically now, they still are trying to win. You know, they're they're not exactly rebuilding. So, uh, do they take a chance on a project like Robinson? We we'll have to wait and see. But uh, if you want to read the full article, go over there on BucksNation.com. Check that out. I would appreciate it. Like I said, you can also uh, check out all the other articles, all the other draft profiles that have been written by my colleagues over at BucksNation.com. You can check out mine as well. I will have a couple more videos coming out uh, about these articles leading up to the draft so uh but you can check them out and read them if you like and don't forget to vote in the poll as well uh, the, the on the clock uh thing there as well on the website so really appreciate all the support thank you all for watching and go bucks